Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. Don't cry, Salia Boy. Yosan Rera Makawakaya Boy. Don't cry, Salia Boy. Yosan Rera Makawakaya Boy. You see, let me tell you this. Please listen. When through the grace of the Spirit you pay the price to align to the power and the grace of God, there is no limit. To the wonder that you will become it will be from one level of glory to another listen the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there are certain things that must be captured within that environment one of it is that there must be liberty the word liberty means separation from oppression there must be liberty doesn't just mean deliverance doesn't just mean healing that everything that can stand as an impediment that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the lord will not gather us here tonight just to watch a man no the lord will not gather us here tonight just to waste our time for every time he calls on his people is because he has prepared a feast of fat things is asked for us to believe, 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 believe. Conceive God as true. Conceive him as true. Don't see God as a scam. Don't see him as a 419. Lord, if you called me and brought me from within this nation or outside this nation, then you brought me to bless me. And I stand here representing the work you have given me. I stand here representing the family you have given me. I stand here representing the pain of my generation. That's how to posture yourself. You don't just come carelessly hoping if paradventure. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You must have a predetermination in your heart that your faith will attract the power of God. Don't assume he will touch you just because he has the power to touch you. No. He responds. He responds. He responds. Your calling him is proof of humility. It's a sign that you have acknowledged that in yourself, you do not sustain the ability to make your desires come to pass. The Lord is nigh them, the Bible says, that call upon him. It's not nigh them that wish or think he's around. He's nigh them that call upon him. And so I welcome you tonight, those following us online from whatever nation of the world, and the people outside and those in here, doesn't matter how far you have traveled and have come, you have come to visit the God who has covenanted with his name in this place. And he will, he will leave you speechless 
by the end of tonight's meeting he not only will bless you he will do something to you that will cost you he says i will walk a walk in your days that even if you were told you will not believe god is a wonder walking god signs and wonders and miracles with messages on them like julius badger will build a block and write their signature so you are not confused where this came from so when he performs his wonders and then he will put his signature upon your life hallelujah please be sensitive be very sensitive i learned this about the healing anointing and i learned this about the power of god in general that every time you are before god one of the easiest ways to receive is to forget about the challenges that you came with and focus on him they looked on to him very simple scripture but instructive they looked on to him and their faces were lightened and they were not ashamed when you come and you are overwhelmed by your challenges financially you know physically etc etc you focus on your challenges because whatever you focus on magnifies before you so when you stand and you are surrounded by your challenges and all you see is your challenge you may not receive anything are we together now Eben taught us that at the center of it all we must see Jesus the healer the lifter the blesser the restorer the anointer so take your eyes away from the storms no matter how raging they may look and for a few minutes let's focus our attention on jesus christ the lord l-o-r-d sovereign ruler it means incontestable he didn't win an election praise the lord i welcome everyone again to a miracle service for the month of april and it doubles as the final day for our prayer and fasting we have been waiting upon the lord in prayer in fast and we thank god for what he has done and what he will yet do praise the lord very quickly before i get into the word we have a lot to do tonight is um, a miracle and a communion service so we are going to start with the communion and then afterwards um, we'll just have some time to minister to the sick and to trust the Lord to come in in a mighty way and to lift us up um, I pray that I remember to share with us a few things to expect every time you come before God it's not important to have an expectation you must know what else can be expected you can have an expectation that is based on your limited understanding of who god is but sometimes your horizon needs to be broadened to know what else he can do so in as much as it's good to have an expectation you must know that more than my expectation he is able the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think so god's ability is limitless praise the lord hallelujah there are so many people tonight i may not want to necessarily interrupt the flow of what god is doing we'll find some time in the course of the service to just take our time and really really honor and appreciate everyone there are people who have traveled from everywhere within and outside this nation and we honor all the men and women of god i have my dear friends and the ministers of god seated here in front we'll take our time to really really celebrate everyone later on but i want us to just focus on the word and let's trust the lord to help us praise the lord amen second peter chapter one we began to deal with this second peter chapter one we're reading the first three verses just to establish something for our faith to rest upon and then we trust god and whilst we are doing that please may i request that the communion be set so that we would make it really really very fast we'll start from verse 2 verse 2 and 3 
it says grace and peace please look up if you don't have a bible be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of god and of jesus our lord verse 3 according as his divine power stop and let me just buttress on this for the sake of those who are just joining us today we establish the fact that every possibility in the kingdom comes from his divine power that means the active agency that is responsible for results in this kingdom it is not his word it is not faith it is his divine power please understand faith and the word are instruments that convey his divine power that the active ingredient the force behind the performance of god is his divine power the bible says his divine power hath given unto us all things that means there is nothing that is outside of the jurisdiction of his divine power to provide are we together so if you are healed the agency that brought that healing is his divine power if you are lifted tonight like you will be it comes from his divine power if god opens a door if he smashes obstacles no matter what it is whatever happens in your life that can only be done by god was sponsored by his divine power are we together now so we're establishing this please get the teaching yesterday the dynamics of the anointing please please get it it is very important that your understanding about how the power of god works is straightened and accurate i shared something yesterday i might repeat a little bit of it this morning or this evening really but then the goal is to get us to solidify our understanding it's a very simple principle but if you do not have it you may never see the power of god at work are we together now yes so his divine power hath given us all lifting all healing all speed all restoration are we together now all energizings all deliverances his divine power because for many years you see from preachers to members to elders in the faith we have not exactly understood the dynamics how the word of god how faith and how the anointing synergizes themselves together to produce a performance in believers so we have those who believe in what they may call the word we have those who believe in what you may call faith we have those who believe in what you call the power of god and none of them is wrong because the results show they must be doing something right are we together now yes the divine power of god is the central working force that bets his ability in the life of people and over their situations the word of god listen like i taught you faith you know comes from the word of god your conviction of it are we together now faith is derived from the word of god that means that god has made several propositions in scripture according to his integrity is a manifesto of what he is able to do are we together now so he's proposing to the saints that for trusting me these are the possibilities that can accrue to your life so it's up to you by the ministry of the holy spirit to come to a point of conviction are we together now when you come to that point of conviction then you are mandated to demonstrate your conviction through an action of obedience the name given to both the conviction and the action you take is faith if you are convicted and do not act in compliance with the condition that makes for that result you have believed but you are not in faith is it simple enough are we together now that means that faith is not only resident within the heart it starts with the heart but there must be a step that is taken to honor your conviction understanding has come to you when you know your role in the equation of your results if you do not know the role you have to play in the equation of your result you do not understand it this is very important but the word of god please listen is the agency by which faith is built 
it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god it doesn't necessarily mean just hearing a voice that means that there is a system of interaction with your spirit man when you are exposed to whether the written word or the spoken word if it's the word that comes from god it sustains an ability to rest upon your spirit full of god's convictions the bible is full of his propositions this is what i can do and then you prove it by saying lord i trust you so the word of god itself i'm careful to say this now because i don't want you to make to sound like the word of god is not powerful it is powerful but it is powerful because it is the carrier and the container of his power are we together now the anointing follows the word of god wherever the word of god goes that's where the anointing goes so if the word of god goes in the direction of healing his power goes in the direction of healing if the word of god goes in the direction of lifting his power goes in the direction of lifting but i said something yesterday that i will establish quickly for the purpose of the impartation that would happen later that our limitations or the inability to see the fullness of god's power is caused by two factors yesterday i attempted to establish that number one the nature of the operation of the anointing is that just because you are anointed does not mean everything can be done the anointing works like money are we together now that every level and every dimension has a spiritual price tag the possibilities that can be purchased at that level if you have 10,000 naira there are certain things you can obtain with that amount are we together now you cannot obtain anything higher than 10,000 so I gave an example yesterday come doctor I gave an example yesterday that if I am a man of God and I have let me use for the purpose of example say 100,000 naira worth of anointing watch this I hope you understand why my, my example when this gentleman comes to receive from me under god god is limitless his power is limitless the holy spirit is unlimited are we together now but remember the possibilities are according to the power that works not lives in me are we together now then when i pray for this brother father bless him father lift him the level of grace that i have are we together now will scan through this man's life and only solve the problems that are within the grace oh dear i'm just spotting him please let's honor the pastor of second equa here may the lord honor you sir i cannot but honor you thank you surprise surprise thank you god bless you so much sir hallelujah are we together so this man has he's in need of restoration watch this now he's in need of speed he's in need of lifting he's in need of deliverance he's in need of healing he's in need of impartation of a supernatural grace say the gift of the spirit it is only the problem that is within the level of the anointing i have that will be solved he may fall down he may roll under the anointing he will get up with some cases solved and others not solved this is the reason why being anointed once is not enough you must strive to grow in glory because you get to a point where every challenge that is brought is within the level of your grace that's when you become a blessing so the bible says it this way how god anointed jesus you see that now the secret of his going around doing good was not just that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed When you read Isaiah chapter 47, it begins to show us the dimensions or the progressions of the anointing in the life of a person and the possibilities that can happen at every level. Ezekiel the prophet was in a vision and he began to see a river that flowed from the east side of the temple and then it was to his ankle, then it was to his knee, it was to his loins and then it was a river that he could not flow through it and the bible says whatever contacted that river at that level every fish that was dead came alive 
there are certain conditions and levels of the anointing where certain results are activated all results are not activated at every level if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the reason why the apostles will minister and sometimes they will honestly admit that this level of grace is not at work in their life and they will go and outsource for other dimensions of the spirit to continue from where they've stopped are we together i believe and i am convinced that the sons of skiva had succeeded in some level of deliverance at one point or the other i do not want to believe that was their first trial the level of confidence reveals that they must have gotten some results so they said we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches and hear the response of the demon jesus i know you see in other words the demon is saying i know who i am i'm not stupid i know the level of grace that can get me out here i know that jesus has it i know that paul has it but i don't know where you are standing and you see this is it so if you can if you can't pray for me and get me free then i will pounce on you you see it now it's a it's a big risk to be anointed at a very low level because you will not see the need to press for more of god and then you will believe that just because the anointing is there just like money just because you touch the back of your pocket and there's something there does not mean you have what it takes to purchase the things that you want so this is what we identified as the number one reason why we may not be able to obtain certain results and you know the level of grace and anointing at work in your life by the testimonies that recycle around your life and ministry the testimonies that recycle around your life are a testament they are proof that this is what the grace you have can produce are we together number two we discussed yesterday if you remember very carefully that the second um revelation that we must understand on the dynamics of the anointing is that your understanding is what structures the efficiency of the anointing listen carefully that means that it is not enough to be anointed the dimensions and the possibilities that the anointing produce is where your understanding takes it to i gave you an example yesterday that the anointing is likened to a reservoir of water are we together and your understanding is like the host wherever you channel the water to it will go the pressure and its ability to give life is not in doubt but the various areas that will partake of that water is governed by this host call your understanding that means listen that means that if all i know is the dimension of god that heals every time i pray for someone the only dimension they will see in their life is healing my understanding will continue to push the anointing to manifest as the healing power of god so if the person is looking for prosperity for instance i will pray for the person but you will find out that he will be healed but not prosper and the reason is because the moment i sustain an understanding of the economic system of god then the power of god can follow that new pathway to heal his finances are you getting what i'm saying now yes so if i do not understand the principles that make for restoration after a delay i can come and say in the name of jesus be restored no the anointing will want to follow the path of restoration but understanding has not opened the channel so the anointing is limited and it will be forced to follow the path that is currently open and if that path is healing or whatever it is then you see it there that means that you are efficient in the dispensing on the of the power of god to the degree to which you sustain understanding of god's ways his methodologies hallelujah so in my example like i gave every time there was delay in a man's life restoration came exclusively through the prophetic are we together now that means that if i want the power of god to bring restoration to this man the power of god must flow through the prophetic to produce that effect if it flows through any other channel it may bless the man but not restoration 
are you getting what i'm saying now that means that if i want restoration i will create a pathway of the prophetic for the anointing to come and bless this man this is very very powerful because most believers um and this is the reason why you may want to reason this with me for a while that our fathers respectfully speaking and all those who have gone to be with the lord a number of them did not pay the price to get illumination and spiritual enlightenment are we together they subjected themselves in much fasting and prayer and they had very heavy deposits of the anointing but you notice that with the level of anointing they had their results were small because the understanding that will give that anointing expression to manifest in the various facets of their lives were not there we went to second kings yesterday and we saw how that the problem was not the oil the problem was the vessels the vessels if there is a vessel of the understanding of the healing ministry and it is filled the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of prosperity the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of church growth the church will grow if there is a vessel of speed etc etc so it's not enough to be anointed that's why jesus mentored people by giving them over 99 percent teaching they sat under a strong teaching ministry and then in one day they received an impartation we reverse the case in our generation we are always doing impartations we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up but the results do not change because the understanding that gives it expression is not there notice that for such people who have been receiving impartation for many years the day they get any light the result is almost instant because it's like the anointing has been piling up just waiting for the doorway that opens for it the walking knowledge of the power of god i believe in the power of god but it is very frustrating to not know how it can translate to the results of people your being anointed does not mean anything until lives are changed and transformed in a way that is notable enough please listen listen take note of it in a way that is notable enough in a crowd like this my brothers and sisters please reason with me that in a crowd of thousands of people like this and several others from around the world imagine that at the end of this service only three or four or five people are healed delivered or lifted by god's standard even by human standards you did a bad job so you are a blessing to the degree to which you have intimacy with god and you understand the operations of his divine power enough to be able to flow like a river Shabakataya. flow like a river so that in one hour someone who is probably standing I'm, I'm told they had to create a new overflow so let's use the overflow four right you're just standing at overflow four hoping lord will you touch me and in five minutes you check around and you cannot understand your life again because you have moved to another dimension his divine power his divine power please hear me whatever issue of concern it is the divine power of god that is able to produce it we're here thousands of us with our various requests representing our pain our disappointments our frustrations our expectations my assignment as a man of god is to bring your challenges face to face first with god and then his divine power and then if i can do that i finish my assignment my assignment is to connect your situation with the power of god and get out of the way and then you watch the wonder working power of jesus when you don't get out of the way you become an interruption to the efficiency of the power so the assignment of an anointed man of god as it were is to allow the lord to use him by the spirit of god to connect the challenges of people to his divine power if you can do that a miracle service has started hallelujah 
and so then it becomes it becomes mandatory upon us men and women of god to study the systems that can help us connect the power of god to people's problems like you connect a a, a fuse to a socket and switch it on you finish yours and the gadget begins to work it works for as long as that connection is there hmm. hallelujah praise the lord so let it not surprise you if within the next few minutes you turn around and cannot see what you came here with it is his divine power hmm. his divine power remember the testimony of our precious mother was so touched when she shared that testimony just like that in the twinkling of an eye someone's life changes the twinkling of an eye a grace you did not come here with goes back with you a twinkling of an eye a challenge that you have had that has been age long listen let me tell you don't get too used to the hand of satan on your life just because his hand has rested for a long time does not mean it cannot be lifted you tried lifting it with different graces so they did their best but there are graces that can lift it is true it is true praise the lord your assignment tonight is to believe that his divine power is able to come through for you and then number two to be prepared listen listen please this is your own part now to be prepared to respond by faith what does it mean to respond by faith to listen for the instructions that make for your result it's important every result has a strategy a pathway that produces it if your challenge is jericho you need to know how to go around and shout if your challenge is the red sea you need to know how to use the rod to part it if your challenge is five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand you need to know the mystery of thanksgiving that makes for multiplication if your challenge is the leprosy of naaman you need to know how to go to jordan to wash all results are not produced by the same strategy it is the same divine power but your faith must be anchored on an instruction that is tied to it Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says that you will be set up on high above all nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you praise the Lord that's how it works so while you take your eyes away from your pain you must set your gaze on something else jesus the possibilities is it true oh god that you can turn my family situation around seven of us came for this miracle service and lord i don't even know where you will start but then you listen you listen you listen sometimes it can come as one prophetic word and it's done look let me tell you something the ease with which miracles happen i think is the reason why many people cannot receive it how do you look at someone like this and say go it's done what does that mean you are making a mockery of me i sang praise and worship i rolled on the ground and i stood here and all you tell me is go was that not what naman was complaining about he said you mean you want to embarrass me i just go and wash in a river I thought you will even come out and salute me and give me something more intelligent. But you see, the ways of God are not like the ways of men. Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus and he said, the wind blow it where it listed. He says, you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming. He says, so is one who is led of the spirit. You have to be spiritual to understand the ways of God. You have to be spiritual because traditions of men can make the word of god of non-effect it can strangle the potency of god's word but tonight i agree with you and i know that there are people here who are determined that everything we are going to be doing here within the next hour or so that it will culminate to a tangible result let me tell you this i love jesus christ i love him with all my heart and i made a vow unto god 
that among the many things that will happen to the people that he ever brings to me and puts under my care wasting their time will not be part of it i made up my mind by god that you should not come for koinonia twice to testify no 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 you should come twice to grow you should come twice to learn you should come twice to know god but one encounter should be enough it's true one encounter apostle i came to take fresh fire one encounter one encounter i came to break the bands of witchcraft and wickedness in my family one encounter one encounter apostle my family members did not come with me but they asked me to represent them it doesn't matter one encounter the power of god master he says he told the centurion let me come to your house to honor you being a captain in the army he said no for i am also like you a man under authority i understand the stretching power of authority i may be limited as a person but the roman government has a jurisdiction and that whoever is under the influence of that government can feel the effect of the government so they may not be here but the earth is still the lord's so they are still within the jurisdiction of his reach and if you are a man under the authority of that owner then the power of god should flow right in on the integrity and the sovereign power of that owner to touch anybody anywhere this i believe this i believe this i believe apostle i don't even know the name of my situation i've gone to the hospital they have done everything jesus if he said he was just healer we would have found reason to be afraid later on but he says i am the resurrection and the life what is resurrection giving life to something that has no business having life resurrection resurrection i am he that was dead but now is alive apostle i came here with my cv is it that god cannot give me a job i've gone around looking for jobs again and again i've applied everywhere god should see my family what then is the blessing if the anointing cannot change the situation what does it mean to be a blessing as a man of god does it mean to preach well does it mean to be sympathetic to people's situation as important as that is sympathy does not produce result it only provides comfort god did not call us to be sympathizers no he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me too then he begins to list all the things that will happen and then at the end of all of those things he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oak or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might in their result be glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus christ lifted up his eyes to the heavens praying and he taught us a principle there verse one he says father the hour has come and then he said glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is god glorified when the son is glorified how is god glorified as a healer when the son is healed when the daughter is healed how is god glorified as a lifter when the son is lifted when the daughter is lifted how is god glorified as a deliverer the dimension of god that he gets glory from is the dimension that the result manifests in your life he cannot be glorified as one who is quick and powerful until your life testifies it your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your power is real i testify how then do you know the favor of god is real listen 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 your faith must grow to trust 
the difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on god's integrity are we together now it, uh, on who god is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if i'm meeting you for the first time dr emeka and they tell me you are a doctor i will have faith in you i can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you i will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and i cannot walk what should happen to you when you give me an injection i am fine then i come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works i begin to note you and associate you with my joy and then eventually i conclude that this man is worth my belief this man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that i do not understand i can reach back at the archives of your track record and say i may not know what you are saying but i know what you said and i know what i saw genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real I testify, I testify that your goodness is real. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. Trust in the Lord. How do you trust in the Lord? Take cognizance of his benefits, be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust a testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that god is able take your eyes away i repeat take your eyes away please take your eyes away from anything that is not jesus tonight and focus apostle they've prayed for me a prophet just like you prayed for me an apostle just like you prayed for me a pastor even conducted night vigils in our house i know and i respect god and i respect the grace upon that man except that one more thing i did not teach you about the anointing is that not every anointing blesses you the man must be sent there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent when the word of god passes you it does not bless you it is when it is sent he sent not brought he sent forth it was when the king sent for joseph that his life changed when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you moved around when i sent thee because every time he sends it his integrity is upon it tonight god is sending his word to me to you to us the word that lifts the word for your ministry the word for your life is going to be a quick walk some of you write from the communion as you partake from the communion you finish your own miracle service you will just join others in rejoicing it's true you know yesterday i observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life I would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life 
to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight hmm. it is important god is giving you understanding now when i came into the house of the lord then understood i the house of god is bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken two men met jesus in m house and they began to discuss the messiah and he was there with them but they could not see and then when he broke bread the bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed my assignment is to continue to study continually by the spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints much more than the transformation of the saints much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of god's power the power of god can be encountered hallelujah so we're going to partake of the communion very quickly and for many of you this will be one communion you will not forget It doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion you may serve it like a ritual the wafer does not have any power to do anything for you the bread the cup does not have any power but how shall these things be when i'm using only bread and cup the power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem and whatever comes out of it can produce any result a handkerchief and an apron is not even alive talk more of having faith but when his divine power comes upon it it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders the air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of god then it is no longer the words of man john said i am the voice of one so when you hear me you hear that one hmm. hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free we we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast Shananda Prakatos Shekete Prekete Baladabash. Go ahead and pray, please. Inside, outside. Lift your voices and pray. Are you praying? Lord, I believe it is your divine power. Now I know how the results will come. Your divine power. I know how the lifting will come. Your divine power. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. shadow of your wings your influence is all over us 
We are under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over us. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Senekatabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Seneke Prashd. Endele Gabrande Zedika Shobragadabaladabash. Krato Zazigadabarunde Ketosh. Embrakato Zaleke Pradish. Shebradika Posh. Rakato Variadabaladabash. Rakato Varinde Skemeritash. Rakaparuda Siadabaladaba. He barando jele carusia da baladaba. Please keep praying. Hallelujah. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. We'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56. John chapter 6. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. Next verse. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, not is like my flesh. Is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. 52. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Stop here. Just, just go back. Just go back. This is what he's saying. That in the flesh of the Son of Man, and in the blood of the son of man is his life that the life of the flesh is in the blood are we together now listen very carefully so that when you partake please keep that scripture when you partake of it with understanding the bible says that you are not just taking a wafer you are not just taking a drink but that you are you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of god next verse 54 whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath i told you the word there is not eternal life is the word so way it's not the longevity of the life but the quality of the life and i will raise him up on the last day 55 we're stopping at 56 for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed the last verse he that eateth my flesh this is it and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and i in him this is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one the same mystery in marriage the same mystery with the spirit of god so that by the mystery of partaking in the communion that means the spirit should not know the difference between your body and god's body are we together now yes let me tell you what that means come look at this emeka come watch this if this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong his strength is her own too you understand that are you getting me not part of his strength his strength so if you say she's strong you are right are we together now this is very important now that means that when she's strong and he's weak 
her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just tear open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the christ Please pray. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the season. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleasing. But I can't Blessed are you, O Lord our God, whose words brings in the evening. Please pray in one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go around. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary wafer and a drink. But not after the power of God comes upon it. It says anything receives power after the Holy Ghost comes on it. Not just men. You shall receive power. The you can be this. Can receive power. Provided the Holy Ghost comes on it. He didn't say men shall receive power. No. Anything receives power when the Holy Ghost comes upon it. Your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon this. I lay my hands upon this communion representing all others that are not here i decree oh god that in a very strange way may your power flow through this in the name of jesus let it bring miracles let it bring all kinds of deliverances in the name of jesus whoever partakes of this tonight in the name of jesus i declare instantly may your power begin to rest upon them let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen. Let infirmities give way in the name of Jesus. Let deliverances, let devils and demons begin to leave. Let doors begin to open. In the name of Jesus Christ. My flesh is meat indeed. 
we partake with understanding we partake with understanding please make sure everybody something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this you will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion Go ahead, take it with faith and watch the wonder-working power. The wonder-working power of Jesus. The wonder-working power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit. Whoa. Please be patient tonight. God is setting people free. When there is understanding to your spiritual activity, then the power is released. The power is released. You will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already. Shalakaparuda Seketa. My flesh is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life. Da 
Kala barada gata pranda gata karusa siana gata. Jependes ke mahasabara katus kapriya gata. Yeah. Alanda rapa sobada kata bala katus. has not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ Right now, I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd, inside and outside, everybody under any kind of bondage, I decree, be free now. Be free now. I command judgment on strange spirits. In the name of Jesus. The spirits of ancestry, the workings of bloodlines and territories, I come against you by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Listen, we are still praying. Please pay attention. I'm praying now. The Lord is showing me families. I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression. Nothing moves in that family. You can go to school. It doesn't make any difference. You can get a job. It doesn't make any difference. Have a business. It doesn't make any difference. I stretch my hands. Where are those people? Inside and outside. I declare right now. The power of God is coming upon you. It's time for your family to be released. At the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. I lose your family. I set them free. I set them free. Shamanda kaskabarakata. Embrekete kaparoto seteka. Sheketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeketeket
I declare freedom. Shapas Kote Barakata. Don't be distracted. Just pay attention, please. Samarakato Zegedesh. Ilabanda Rahas Kabarukato Zadekata. Paruzes Yanakata. Breketela Kuzianamas. Kratena Zaziamakato. You rise to a level and then you crash back. It's a pattern that exists in families. There's nothing wrong with rising. Keep rising. But you plateau at a level and then you crash back. I stretch my hands now. This is what the Lord is showing me. My God. My God. I decree and declare. The spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame. Represented in anyone here. The legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus I release such people right now be released in the name of Jesus be released in the name of Jesus overflow three please lift your hands the Lord is showing me something happening in overflow three overflow three please lift your hands mighty God mighty god i see a lot of attacks serious attacks on overflow three i don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there i'm seeing a lot of attacks at the count of three overflow three i want you to shout the name jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there overflow three one two three shout jesus hallelujah i'm seeing the gate of a prison and i'm seeing people inside the gate of a prison like the front of a prison and i remember scripture says to open to set at liberty them that are bound there are people who are moving but are in prison all sorts of prisons right now i decree and declare even by the power of the holy ghost let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage, I declare that those chains are loose now. I declare that those chains are loose now. And for all those in front here, representing all those that I'm praying for, I declare not only that the spirits leave you, but that whatever they took from you as surely as the god of heaven lives your families must testify of that restoration therefore leave them now go go out of them now in the name of jesus release their families release their spiritual lives release their finances hallelujah praise the lord please this row lift your hands i just see angelic activities happening here and i'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs this is what i'm seeing here something is being removed out of people's stomachs that's what the lord is showing me just this role i don't know what it is but god is uprooting something that should not be there by the spirit of the living god let it go let it go in the name of jesus i place the word of god upon that situation it must let you go right now the lord is taking something out i still continue to see this vision god is taking something out of people's stomachs the spirit of the lord is 
there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty i'm seeing the feet of a man and i'm seeing the feet of a man under chains under chains this is what i see and the lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet i know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families and i declare right now according to that which the lord has shown me in the name of jesus that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position right now by the power of the holy spirit right now something is happening to people i decree i decree and i declare let there be liberty now inside outside let there be liberty right now let there be liberty liberty i command progress to your life move forward i push you by prophecy move forward make progress move forward make progress i forbid stagnation move forward make progress I don't know how to pray this prayer now. Those who are fine up here can return to their seats. I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people. You don't have to bring the people out. I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again. Almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months, the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer. And my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. Osha, be discerning. In the name of Jesus, that lady is not yet free. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Please someone to join the PR can join the ushers protocol can join the ushers I want to pray there is a grace for speed there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no there is a difference between progress and speed I had an encounter with the Lord and he placed this grace upon my life if not that it happened, I know there is advancement and I know there is speed. But I never knew what it was and how it operated until the Lord gave me an encounter. Truly, let me tell you, there is a real grace for speed. And when that grace comes on you, you will join the world in shock as to what becomes of your life. And the Lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night. There's someone here that needs this grace. This is why you came. It's not like you are stagnated, but it takes forever. If you will believe, 
if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit, you will be surprised. I'm going to pray this prayer. The reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer, people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit. I don't know why it happens that way. Be sensitive, please. And then it is of the spirit. Please don't ask me why it happens that way. But if you will let me pray this prayer tonight, God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month. I know it works. When you have this grace on your life, you don't fear delay. It makes no difference. You will gain time within moments. I decree and declare by the privilege of God's grace, I stretch my hands inside, everywhere, overflow, one, two, three, online. Father, I pray right now, let the grace for speed at the count of three come upon someone. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I shift you. Speed. 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 Speed to your spiritual life. Speed to your finances. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed upon your influence. This is a major answer to your prayer. I declare it again. Speed. Speed. Receive it. Receive it. It is not by might nor by power. But by the spirit of God. You can be picked up upon the wings of the spirit. And do things that eyes have not seen. That ears have not heard. I pray it again. Those outside receive it. Those outside receive it. I declare speed. In the similitude of Elijah, you will run and you will overtake the chariots of Ahab. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually. This woman you are seeing, as frail as she may look, but the hand of God will come upon her. And she will speak forth the purposes of God with power. I stretch my hands upon you and I pray that the spirit of God will perfect. Let there be a birthing. A birthing of the things that he has begun upon your life. A birthing of the things that he has begun. My friend, come. This man. We may not have time to prophesy to people. There's a lot to do. Lift your hands. I don't know you. You are coming from somewhere. And there are two graces that God is bringing upon your life. Number one is for your own benefit, restoration. That's what I hear. Number two, this speed that you see I prayed for is coming upon you. I stretch my hands. May that grace in the name of Jesus, first for restoration. Let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen. And then I declare speed. You receive it now. Move forward. Go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's an elderly woman here called Rebecca. 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 If we talk to people, the time will be gone. We have to honor it so that we can do some other things. Who is that? Rebecca. Please, when you find the person, I want to talk to her. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray for the sick. Kai.
this woman is outside you are not inside you are wearing a, a red like wrapper on your head the same with what is down on you Conf confirm it mama your name is rebecca where are you from outside i will pray for you now i don't know you have never seen you but i want to pray for you the lord is going to honor you i decided to take a pause because um the lord just asked me to stand here that's why i'm standing here i'm standing here because i saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this just like that just out of someone this is what i saw in the name of jesus release this family now release this family now in the name of jesus christ madam i'll pray for you your name is rebecca too please come i will pray for you i found the person i'm ministering to but i'll pray for you from where madam from where from area c area c yes sir. i want to pray for you what's wrong with your back back pain this is what it's i'm true. seeing you it's get up true. in the morning and, and then you feel a lot yes, of pain sometimes yes. you cannot even wash yes, yes. number two your chest too yes, it's true. severe it's true. chest around the breast yes, region yes. It's true. the lord is setting it's you free true. right now madam yes, in the name of jesus let it be over right now and forever in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ I just had like a car crash in my ears. You know how an accident just happens right now. This is what I just had in my ears. And that the family that that should happen for is in this place. I'm going to pray right now. Be free now. I command death. You are a spirit. I judge you by the God of heaven. And to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage I want to pray for you madam in the name of Jesus Christ that God himself will bless you and not only bless you where are your children madam huh? Thank you. Your children are here. Yes. Where are they? Patient. Isaac. Patient and Isaac. And Sarah. This may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick. There's a lot. Patience and Isaac. Now only glory no day here. Let me just pray for you. If, if you are the only one who can represent them. Stand up please my friend. Mama I will pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Because I'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family. The Lord himself is bringing it to a very major breakthrough. I have no business saying anything God did not tell me. I've not prayed the prayer yet, yet you are receiving it. It's the grace for favor. The grace for favor. The grace for favor. This man will be like a well-watered garden. That the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, Ma. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the breakthrough that the Lord shows me, let it come and come speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are her daughter? Let me pray for you, my dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will not say there is something in your stomach growing. Huh? I'm rebuking something they will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach I just laid my hands and God is healing someone in overflow one oh, please hold on there is a growth there is a growth there is a growth this has been characterized by extremely painful your period is extremely painful but more than that there is a growth just around your abdominal area overflow one you don't have to come out the power of god is touching that person right now in the name of jesus christ 
my dear in jesus name by the spirit of the living god we declare your liberty complete total final in jesus name i pray see when when you understand the ways of god you will love god more when you understand the principles of the kingdom and you see how that your life becomes predictable hallelujah then you will know that no power in existence can really tie down your destiny it doesn't matter what the disadvantage has been just stay there is a force the bible says how forcible are right words there is a force that no power not your background not your mistakes not your limitations can resist hallelujah in one minute i'd like you to just pray just this one prayer and say lord help me to be attentive tonight i throw away familiarity i embrace your word with the heart of a child Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When the Lord laid this message tonight, I was very excited because I know that this message tonight will apply to almost everyone, if not everyone. God has been teaching us all through this month of July strategies how to come into the realm of greatness, influence, to contend for that relevance. And I pray that these words that we receive will not stand against us in the days to come. That 10 years from now you will not stand and still be a failure and watch those who listen to what they are listening now. The same thing you are hearing Many of our parents ignored opportunities like that. They kept laughing and mocking at those who were serious. And look at the heritage many of them have passed on to us right now. Suffering, pain, trouble, curses, yokes. They had every opportunity that every great man has today. But like many of us are doing, they did not pay attention. Being distracted by all kinds of things. But tonight I pray. That no matter how hardened your heart is, that for once, you will love your destiny enough to pay attention. The beautiful thing about life is no one will pay your price for you. No matter how stubborn you are, no matter how hardened you are, you can argue today, you can laugh and scorn at what God is doing. But the day of reckoning will come. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. This is a, this is a, bailout is, is an exemption program. God is exempting many of us from so many things. Hallelujah. She She one Thank you for your love. We are not better than those who are going around in ignorance, confused. Listen, with what you know now, I'd like you to imagine the way your life would have been without the knowledge you have now. Did you know that there are many people just like you used to be? And they are equally confident, believing that there is a great destiny waiting for them. Hallelujah. But we thank God for His grace. Galatians 6 verse 9. I want to share something very powerful. Two people please. Mighty revelation tonight. Any two people? Just two gentlemen. 
come, sir. Thank you. Please stand here. Any other person? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we have been taught the revelation of the things that God desires to do in our lives. Please follow me. We have been taught that God has an agenda and that He seeks to make us ambassadors. That there is a prophetic destiny for everyone. Say after me, I have a prophetic destiny. Say it, I have a prophetic destiny. And this is a revelation of the prophecy over our lives. Hallelujah. That there is something God wants to do. There is something God wants to make out of us. There is a debt that we owe our generation that we must pay in our lifetime. And that God is trusting us. Hallelujah. So this is prophecy. And on the other side, we have the manifestation and the fulfillment of this prophecy. Are you following me tonight? When we begin to walk in the experience of that which has been spoken concerning us. So many of us have been taught what it is that God has written and said concerning you and your life and family and destiny. And through the eyes of prophecy we can see that which God is going to do. We have in our minds a picture of the kind of destiny. But what I want to teach tonight is how to manage the seasons between prophecy and their manifestation. This is the greatest, in my opinion, the greatest revelation that you need to cap up these teachings on influence and greatness and the kingdom. Because it is through this journey, brothers and sisters, that many fall by the wayside. Are you getting my point? It is through this journey that many never make it there. there it's, it's like a marathon. So many people, hundreds of people standing with all of their, their athlete apparels. But in the final analysis at the end, only maybe less than one or two or three percent of those people ever arrive at the finish line. And I want us to finish strong. Hallelujah. Many of us are at this season of our lives and we've been praying, fasting and say, Lord, explain to me what meaneth these things? What is the mystery behind the things that are happening in my life? What season am I in? Please listen tonight because God is about to speak to you. Galatians 6 verse 9. Please read everybody. One more time. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in what? Hold on. In what? There is a timing in the spirit called due season. For in due season. Not any time. Do not be weary in well-doing. I'm building up from what I shared last week. For in due season. We will reap. But there is a condition. What is the condition? If we... That means... If we faint, what will happen? Although the due season will come... But we will not reap. Hallelujah. So there are two things there. There is a due season... And there is a call... For endurance. Call for strength. Call for continuity. Hallelujah. One of the most disturbing aspects of the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom is the concept of timings and seasons. There are very few messages in the body of Christ that attempt to address the issue of divine timings and the seasons of men's life. Yet the Bible talks a lot about the things that happen under the sun. And that anything under the sun is governed by times and seasons. Say after me, times and seasons. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 gives us an extensive description of the revelation and the power.
power of times and seasons and how that these things hold the key to our manifestation in this earth, in this realm. And that means if we do not understand spiritual timings, if we do not understand seasons, we may be equipped with the principles, but we will faint because we do not realize that God is working even at those times and seasons. So I want to teach on certain things that will bless us tonight. The Bible says for us not to be weary in well-doing. Hallelujah. It said for in due season we will reap. Last week I began to talk about how that the Bible gives us a mystery that time and chance happen to them. You remember that teaching? Hallelujah. And so that our, our, our part of the equation is not to sit down and keep waiting for the time. The Bible already gives us a guarantee that time and chance will happen to everyone. So rather than sitting down and waiting, where will my turn come? We spend the time doing what? Sharpening our abilities. So that when that time comes, we will be ushered into the realm of greatness never to come out again. If you believe it, say Amen. Let me talk about two concepts and then we'll build number one write this word down waiting w-a-i-t-i-n-g waiting one word that gets believers scared in the kingdom many people have preached all kinds of messages but tonight i want us to examine this concept i do my best by the leadership of the spirit to make sure that we leave no stone unturned as far as the journey to our destiny and our success is concerned waiting one of the hardest things that can happen to a believer is to enter a season of waiting it can be so frustrating it can be so painful that it will take the ability and the strength of the spirit for you to survive that season please take note of what i'm sharing no matter how anointed you are no matter how great you are if there is a prophecy upon your life hear me between that prophecy and the manifestation of that prophecy a time will come in your life when you will step into this season of waiting and it's important i teach you how it works in the kingdom otherwise when you enter that season you may be so confused and you will abort destiny not knowing what is happening behind the scenes is somebody getting blessed already because many of us right now are in this phase as i speak right now there are individuals who are at these periods of their life and truly they are confused because this season rattles your convictions everything you have believed comes under the test when you come to this season your ideologies your beliefs your prayer life your dexterity in the spirit your endurance everything you have ever acquired through the world will come on that test and if you cannot stand that test brothers and sisters you may stand from here and see canaan but you may never enter it the fact that you have seen the vision the fact that you have had the dream is no guarantee the fact that God spoke to you is no guarantee that you will arrive there. Is someone hearing what I'm saying? You saw yourself a mighty evangelist. You saw yourself a mighty apostle. In your dreams, you see crusades. You see a lot of things. In your dreams, you have seen that you are a financial apostle. You've seen yourself doing mighty things for the kingdom. I want to announce to you tonight that between the prophecy and its manifestation are stages and principles and one of those stages is called the period of waiting and if you do not understand these brothers and sisters you may never arrive there proverbs 13 verse 12 Proverbs 13 verse 12. Let's hurry up tonight. Open your heart. Hallelujah. 
Now, the Bible explains to us, you see, look up, please. I've spent my life not just studying on the kingdom, but studying about man. Because I'm a man. And I, I like to know what, what my, the components of my, my, my creation, my build up. I like to know what my strengths are. Not as a, my personality, but the general man. I like to know who man is. What are his limitations? What are his predicaments? What are the vulnerabilities that can befall man? This revelation helps me to know where to lean on God more. Hallelujah. And here and there I have found certain inevitable weaknesses that are fabricated in man. And it will take us understanding those limitations. And leaning on the strength of God to supplement for our inadequacies at that time. Otherwise we will not last. One of it is this simple scripture that many of us have read again and again. One to read. Hope deferred makes what? When you postpone hope. When expectations are not met. The Bible says it can affect your spirit man. Are you reading it here? The word heart, there's the same word spirit. When you hope for certain things, by our natural design, we love winning. We love achieving. We love accomplishing things. Are you getting my point? We love seeing a sign of progress in our lives. Is someone getting what I'm, I'm, I'm saying tonight? The Bible says, when that hope that we have, that drives us into destiny, when those expectations that we have are not achieved, when it is deferred, that means when it is postponed, the Bible says it has an effect, not just in your physical body. It does not just create fatigue in your physical body. It affects even your spirit man. It said, but when desire cometh, it is a tree of life. When you achieve your goals and you hold on to it, there is the joy that fulfillment and accomplishment brings in every man. Hallelujah. That means when the waiting period between your prophecy and its manifestation gets too long, if you do not understand the technology and the provision that has been made in the spirit to carry you through that process, you may never arrive there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Although anointed, although born again, the Bible tells us that there is, a, there is an inadequacy that is in man. That man does not have the, the ability to endure, to suffer long forever. That means a time comes in the equation of your life when your patience gets stretched out. No matter how good and godly you are. That means there must be a technology in the spirit that is able to hold you and take you to the place of destiny. Say Amen. Now, there are two dimensions to waiting and I want us to look at it. Number one is that waiting so that we don't confuse ourselves here. Waiting can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. We must get this. It's very important. Waiting can be a demonic strategy. Please write it. It can be a demonic strategy to delay and limit you from fulfilling your destiny in Christ. I must balance this straight up. So that many of us do not sit down and allow the devil delay our destinies forever. And then get convinced. Because if the word of God is not rightly divided, the devil can use that it is written. And convince many of us now who should be preparing for miracle service next week. And say, Lord, an end comes to this. There are certain periods of waiting that are not divine. They are not initiated by God at all. Are you getting my point now? They are strategies from the kingdom of darkness to delay and limit us 
from entering our prophetic destiny. That kind of waiting is called delay. Write it down. The name given to that kind of waiting is delay. Delay. Satan's strategy to limit you and hinder you and stop you. Paul said once and again, I desire to come to you, but Satan hindered us. Satan can hinder men. Then number two, the second dimension is that delay can be a divine orchestration. Please get this. You must get this. That there are two dimensions to look at waiting in the kingdom. All of our teaching is within the context of the kingdom. That there is a waiting process and period that is orchestrated by the kingdom of darkness to limit us. And the name given to it is delay. But that there is a waiting period. There are these seasons that are divine orchestrations. Lamentations 3.25. Can we look at it very quickly? Is someone getting blessed already? Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, guys. You soon go and sit down. Okay, just go, just go, just go. Oh, bless you. So you can be writing. It's very important that you write. Lamentations 3.25. Are we there? Everyone, please look up and read before you continue writing. One to read. The Lord is good unto them that do what? Not wait on Him. Wait for Him. Wait for Him. It's a very difficult thing to wait. Very, very difficult. And this divinely orchestrated period of waiting is called process. Write it in the kingdom. It's called process. Process. So there is a difference between waiting as a process to your destiny and waiting as delay from the kingdom of darkness to destroy you. And you must sustain the ability to discern so that you know whether to align and receive grace and might from God or to stand and take authority over the activities of darkness. Hallelujah. Process. Very important. You will come to this period of your life. Whether you pray for it or not, it's part of the things that you will find. And I'll be showing you from scripture how that many people messed up when they got to this season. Let me give you one example. Remember the nation of Israel. Hallelujah. They came out. There was a prophecy given to Moses. Even Moses, their leader, did not enter the promised land. Look up. Did you know that God never told Moses he was going to die on the way? Is that true? The prophecy that was given to Moses was that he was going to lead the people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey. God never told him somebody will take out the baton. But between Egypt, brothers and sisters, and Canaan, only two people from that generation were able to make it. Only two people. They all had the prophecy. They rejoiced. They joined Moses after the, the, the parting of the Red Sea to sing. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider because it had not stretched their patience too much but they came to a point. Look at all the things they did in the wilderness because they did not understand this operation. And listen, if you do not learn the lesson, you will do the same thing. It's easy to talk about them. Thank you Jesus Christ. A few thoughts about waiting that I want you to note. Number one, in the kingdom, please make sure you note that we are talking with respect to the kingdom. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. In the kingdom, waiting is not the absence of progress. 
For many of us, our concept of waiting is to stand still. Known to be motionless. But that's not the way it works in the kingdom. When you enter the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it does not mean absence of progress. It also does not mean absence of advancement. That when you are in the seasons of waiting in the kingdom, it's not the same thing as saying you are in one spot, not making progress. To you, you think you are in one spot because there is no physical evidence to measure your advancement. But I'm telling you right now that behind the scene, there is a lot of advancement taking place number two waiting in the kingdom is not necessarily delay it is the process of preparation i'm taking out time to read it because i don't want us to miss it you'll notice in the last few weeks i've been teaching very carefully reading almost directly from my notebook here because i don't want us to confuse and miss words and then for our online people i want them to follow on thoroughly Waiting is not necessarily delay. It is the process of preparation. Number three. Look up. I want to explain something now about waiting. One of the biggest things I've seen in the lives of people, and please listen, God is about to minister directly to us now, is that because we have expectations for something great about our life we postpone all of our joy and gladness and shift it are you getting my point to the future so that we will take advantage of that joy when we arrive and then we starve ourselves of joy during the waiting period are you getting my point but the Bible tells us that the vehicle that carries strength in the kingdom is joy. I want to show you why a lot of people never arrive. During the waiting process, one of the things that we are vulnerable to face is the absence or the diminishing of joy. I'll give you an example. A brother wants to get married. Or a lady wants to get married. God has told you you will get married. Is that true? And you pass all the joy. And say on that glorious day. When I wear my suit. You will see the dance I've never danced before. I will dance David's dance and laugh. But between now and that point. You will see the lady looking frowny. Angry at everybody. Why? Why is God delaying me? And so we kill our joy. Are you getting what I'm saying? And we wait. And we pack up everything. And we keep pushing the joy to the future. And we never get blessed with the moment. That expectation kills our joy. We cry day and night. Oh God. When will I become a millionaire? I'm seeing it. Let me just enter this thing. And you see joyless believers. Angry and offended at God. Note this tonight. That waiting should never postpone your joy. You can be joyful while waiting. Never wait until you arrive. Your joy gets complete when you arrive. But that joy should start and go with you all the way. Because the Bible says the joy of the Lord is the strength that you will need there is a difference between joy and happiness if i give you one million now there is every reason to be happy that's not joy hallelujah but joy is of the holy ghost is the strength and the sense of rest and merriment that comes based on the conviction of god's integrity so when there is no physical evidence you are joyful. He said rejoice in the Lord. And again. I say rejoice. Look up please. How many of us have killed our joy. 
There are so many people. You see a lady of 20 years looking like 50. Why? Say, I'm not in a relationship. God spoke to me. Am I the worst person in the world? No joy. You stand outside tomorrow morning and watch all the people that move. 90% of people are joyless people. They get up in the morning. There's no sense of joy and merriment. You ask them why. And they give you all kinds of legitimate reason. And they believe that they are justified on the strength of those reasons not to be joyful. And they never arrive at their destinations. Is God speaking to someone tonight? That's what changed our parents. Many of them, when they got married like us, they were happy people. Eventually, their expectations. They expected that when the first child is five years, they would have been millionaires, established in their dream jobs, having their own homes. Unfortunately, they had wishes, but they did not understand the principles that will make it happen. So 15 years down the line, they are still crying for rent. There's nothing there. And you find your father old and angry. Now, don't insult him. It's the frustration, the pain and the bitterness that has been fast forwarded. Every new year, people are happy. Do you know why they are happy? Because it makes them forget about the previous year. And for the first one week, they dance. Many churches have all kinds of thanksgiving. By February, everybody is angry. Oh Lord, not again. Will this year pass without the child coming? Oh Lord, so this is how the husband will not come. This is how my admission will not come again. And then our joy. The devil keeps sucking out every ounce of joy. And by the middle of the year, everyone is already frustrated and gassed out spiritually. You must sustain a revelation and a technology in the spirit to make sure that part of the things that suffer of all the things that will suffer during this waiting period your joy should not be one of them are you getting what i'm saying because your joy will culminate to your strength god is speaking to someone tonight waiting in the kingdom is an acknowledgement of divine timing when you wait in the kingdom when you follow through that period you are acknowledging that god works with times and seasons and that you submit yourself to the process of how god makes men great you are everything everything is you you are everything everything Joy. Waiting is an acknowledgement of divine timing. Everybody say divine timing. Say after me, there is a season in my life and destiny when I will manifest. Say one more time, there is a season and a timing. There is a season of showing forth. There is a season of manifestation. There is a season of display. Yes. You must recognize that there is a season. Brothers and sisters, it's called due season. Everyone say due season. Due season. The second word I want us to consider tonight before I begin to build is the word impatience write it down impatience what is impatience patience that has been exhausted patience that has been exhausted tonight I speak like prophet Elijah that that cruise of oil that is left will not run dry 
There is a technology that will refill it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, impatience is deadly and is dangerous to your destiny. Write it down and underline it. Impatience is deadly. I, I think that's one of the greatest keys, in my opinion. One of the greatest keys that the devil has used to destroy Africans, Nigerians, and young people in general. Impatience. Impatience. What does it mean to be impatient? Impatience means getting ahead of God. Getting ahead of God. That's what it means to be impatient. You run ahead of God. You run ahead of His timing for your life. Impatience is a dangerous thing. God is speaking to us tonight. Because many of us are where we are at this point of our lives because of impatience. There are many of us that stress is almost killing us right now because of impatience. Hallelujah. Very, very important. You are a young lady. You are just 21. You want to kill yourself. If I don't marry by 2014... Let it not be that I'm a Christian. And you are yoking yourself. You fasted for two weeks. Which is supposed to be wonderful if it were for a just cause. But at 21, there's all kinds of pressure. And you can't wait. There's no, there's no patience. Impatience has driven many of us into all sorts of things. Everybody say, I receive grace to be patient. Abraham was a man in scripture who the tragedy of impatience caught up with him just write the scripture we may not read it for time's sake i want to hurry up and i want us to finish very fast in genesis chapter 16 from verse 1 to 4 well let's just let's just look at it very quickly genesis 16 1 to 4 that man abraham god had spoken to him now it was taking too long the result was not coming and the bible says in the 16th chapter now sarai abraham's wife bear him no children so this was an issue of barrenness versus the promise of god that he would be the father of all nations and she had a what please read and she had what and that handmaid was an egyptian whose name was hagar i want to show you the danger of impatience Every time impatience begins to grow in your life, you are about to wreck and jeopardize your destiny. Because very soon, there will be something around you that can be an option. Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people have missed out on God's best for them because they could not wait. Two days to enter God's best. We made all kinds of decisions in our lives. Now Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me. Are you seeing her interpretation? That God had restrained from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid, that it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham did what? Because Abraham had been eyeing the girl since. It's just that he didn't have the courage. How will he now tell his wife? Are you getting my point now? impatience will create pictures around your life if by august a godly brother does not come god is my witness i will go anywhere even if it's my village and carry anybody the bible says sarah told abraham i'm sure they have had quarrels and quarrels and sarah said okay this is a handmaid she's younger than me she can still be fruitful. Go ahead and sleep with her. And Abraham said, now you are talking. Abba, now you are talking. Let's, let's make this promise come to pass. Abraham did not argue. The young lady did not argue. Guess what? 
God too didn't say anything. The fact that you are doing things wrong and going ahead does not mean you are right. Are you getting what I'm saying? Did you see that the lady got pregnant? The fact that you compromise and it works does not mean it's God that made it work. There are many things that can happen in this life without God. Marriage can happen without God. You can make money without God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can get the job without God. Oh yes. You can get the admission without God. It's easy to compromise and get the blessing. But every time impatience leads you to take action, get ready because an Ishmael will be born. You are everything. Everything is you. You are everything. Everything is you. Look at verse 11. 11 and 12. Let's see the tragedy of this union. The product of the inability to wait for the word of the Lord. To wait for the seasons. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child. Listen. And shall bear a son and shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord had heard thy affliction. Verse 12. And he will be what? Was that what she planned for? Abraham. Was that the blessing you were told? He said, This union will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man. And every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. That means this troubler will be everywhere. Till today, the world has not recovered from the union. Less than one day of pleasure as a result of impatience. Jeopardize the generation. Who is about to jeopardize his destiny here? There's, there are people here that are about to make decisions as a product of impatience. Is someone getting blessed tonight? The nation of Israel in Exodus chapter 32 when they came out of Egypt Moses went upon the mountain for 40 days. Look at me. It was a waiting period. Is that true? They didn't see any progress. Whereas Moses was on the mountain intercussing with God. So something was happening that they could not see it did not mean nothing was happening. Brothers and sisters, it looks like your life has been stagnant for years. You think you are stagnant. But if God should open your eyes to see the giants you have been conquering in the spirit. God is really ministering to someone tonight. It's not the way you have been looking at it. It's not the way you have been looking at it. Physically, you have not been in school for three years. But there is a progression. The Lord has been doing something. The job did not come. Five years after graduation, you are still struggling. And you believe you are like every other jobless person. Is that true? There is an investment of the Spirit in you. Only if you believe that waiting is not equal to delay in the kingdom. The nation of Israel could not wait. And what did they tell Aaron? Let's look at that verse. Exodus 32. Very quickly. Is someone getting blessed? Impatience can jeopardize your destiny. You can make mistakes that you may only be able to walk through. But never ever be able to cut out of your life. Hallelujah. And they told Aaron, they said, Moses is wasting our time. We don't even know whether he's dead or not. Please, we brought gold out of the temple. We remember that while we were slaves, we saw the Egyptians worshipping a god of gold. And it was the god that brought them out. Oh yeah, Aaron, come and build us this idol. Let's celebrate this idol. We can't wait. If there is God in heaven, why will he keep us in the wilderness for? For this long 40 days we didn't see Moses he didn't tell us anything and we are waiting 
let us build an idol and while god was with moses advocating for the same people they were destroying their own destiny by themselves and aaron said unto them break off the golden earrings they forced aaron they forced aaron which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me verse 3 and all the people took the golden earrings they were so desperate to come out of that season they say is it not earring take oh yeah all the women remove your earrings Lest we need to carve out very fast never find yourself trying to help god in a process that is exclusively within his power to pass you through and bring you to a place of greatness many of us try to help god Uza tried to hold the ark he died yet the ark never fell let's look at just one verse there and then we'll continue and he received them at their hand and fashioned it into a graving tool after he made it into what a molten calf and they said this be thy god O israel which brought thee out of the land so after two years the child doesn't come after praying and praying oh we trust god and then somebody comes to say there's one man who it's not like i'm suggesting that you should go there me my heart it's me praise god the man can pray it's not like a habali it's not exactly it's not a pastor it's not a habali but he used to help people he said really two years ago when they told you say no 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 i'm a child of god Two years later, you are almost gassed out and you say, eh, eh, let me talk with my husband about it. And you know men, when you are talking, it looks like they will say no. And then you are talking and you say, where is the man? You say, have you seen him? Who has he, who has he given uh, a child to? Say, uh, let's be careful with all these people. hallelujah i counsel people and i am amazed at how much people fall when it looks like the word of god dwindles over their life just a little hallelujah i'll never forget one lady who kept sending me text messages almost every day for one week she said she believes that there are instructions i'll give her for her marriage i said my dear there's no instruction i'm i'm spending my life for hours shouting on friday go and listen to relationship and family life series part one two three the next day they say she feels in her spirit that there is an instruction that will just open you see all these things is 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 in innocence but it's an act of impatience impatience will make you hear what god did not say impatience will create a road that was not of god is someone hearing what i'm saying impatience will make you say yes to a guy that two weeks into the relationship you say please was i dreaming who did i say yes to the guy will say sweetheart you say me i said yes to you the guy say you said yes now what is all this again and ladies please be warned i don't know why as i'm talking i'm coming into all this relationship thing. maybe god is speaking to some people through it hallelujah ladies don't find yourself putting pressure on any lady and say answer him now you said it's none of your business if it's not you they ask advice when you are invited otherwise stay away and pray many of us just come and say this guy is my personal person i know him i said you'll be in the relationship and many people jeopardize their destinies is he born again he's a nice person does he love the word of god he's okay he doesn't smoke he, he used to smoke and drink before but abba in the last one year even him he told me he doesn't lie to me honestly if he, you abba me he loves me too much to lie until the day he pounds your face when abel resurrects and you find out that that Cain, Cain, sorry Cain is alive and active and that guy beats the living daylight out of you or you enter his room and see another lady's clothes and the rest and he says so what i'm a man you said you are a Christian, you will not sleep with me. I can't, you are still my wife, but 
I have to find something to be doing before we get married. Impatience. Don't just laugh. I hope you are getting the message. It's a very serious message. Impatience brought the world under, under all kinds of terrible things. Someone getting blessed. Let's hurry up. During the waiting period, certain things usually happen. And I want you to take note of them. Number one is that you have the tendency to get weary. Especially when you have obeyed every principle you know. And there is no obvious change. Hallelujah. There are so many people that, that send me text messages and all of that. And they say, sir, I have been, I've been paying my tithe. God knows. I've been faithful. I've been paying my tithe. I've sown seeds. I've done everything. I'm, I'm a worker in my church. Maybe a member of the, the, the decoration or whatever. I'm a member in this and that. Why is it not working? I've done everything. I've listened to every koinonia message. God is my witness. And I've been walking according to the principles of the kingdom. So weariness can set in. Especially when you are truly obeying the principles. There are many of us who have truly been tithing. You've truly been giving. You've been submitting your prayer request. Miracle service after miracle service. Nothing seems to have happened. But listen. Number two. Your joy begins to fade. When weariness sets in, your joy, like I said earlier on, begins to fade. Number three, impatience sets in. I'm giving, you to it, I'm giving it to you now systematically so that you understand that these are the things that characterize seasons of waiting. The tendencies, the vulnerabilities. Number four, which is the most dangerous part, is that you begin to consider options and alternatives other than that which God has given you. Options. Options. Usually those options are devilish. Usually those options may even look spiritual. But that's not the blueprint of God for your life. When Jesus met Peter, look at me. When Jesus met Peter, I told him, come, follow me. I will make you a fisher of men. Is that true? But when Jesus died, just for three days, three days, Peter did not see Jesus for three days. His patience could not pass 72 hours. And in John 21, he said, Oh boy, I go a fishing. And the disciples said, We go with you. In other words, let's go back to a, an option that we know something about. And when Jesus saw him in chapter 15, thereabout, he said, Lovest thou me? more than this how many of us have given god options god told you you are going to be a great man of god but he said be patient you were not patient now you have started a fellowship that is almost killing you only you and your best friend who is tired he wants to leave it's just that he doesn't know what to do with you only two of you every evening only two of the person is tired because although you are genuinely called but you cannot wait for timings and seasons hallelujah i remember one one pastor gentleman years ago that guy is still struggling till today and if he doesn't adjust he may still be struggling till only god knows when i remember his fellowship years ago appointed him and they said he was supposed to be chief usher it was such an embarrassment to his personality and he said, God did not tell him in the blueprint of his ministerial call that he will be chief usher. If they cannot honor the grace of God upon his life and give him something honorable. By honorable, he means maybe president of the fellowship or something close to it. See that? Many of us have etched ourselves out of the preparations of the spirit. We'll come there. Because we have given ourselves options. Options. Hallelujah. God gave you signs 
he gave you symbols he gave you tokens that will signify to you when certain things are his will you have not seen them the equation has not lined up if god tells you something 80 percent is still not god you must wait until it looks like god it's amazing how impatience can make a thing look like it is god whereas it is not of god and so somebody comes and says will you like to be a pastor in our church and they say thank you jesus i knew it you people are underutilizing my anointing Anytime God did not send you, be sure that you will not see his hand. See, let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why people move ahead of God and they keep struggling until the season comes where God catches up with them and they call it breakthrough. Then they make another mistake again and they wait. Why don't you walk with God? It's dangerous to walk ahead of God. Hallelujah. Impatience. Some of our parents have put our families in trouble because of impatience. I must build a house this year. I must build a house this year. Because my colleagues have built houses. Me too, I must build a house. I must buy three cars this year. One for me, one for my wife, and one for the children. And some of you are part of the sponsors of this impatience. Daddy, do it. You can make it. I believe in you. And now we put all our parents under all sorts of nonsense pressure. Because there is no impatience there, there's no patience sorry hallelujah some of us are here if you want to wear tomorrow's clothes today get set to walk naked tomorrow are you hearing what I'm saying I must buy a suit of hundred thousand you carry everything God has blessed you with now home and abroad you bought one suit and you will die for the remaining part of your life whereas that money came to buy books is someone getting blessed and then the trouble is the jet age and technology has made matters worse hallelujah we have 15 year old millionaires 20 year old millionaires and so everybody just says I, I must make it in this Nigeria if there is a kick I must cut my share or stab whoever is standing close to my share until that piece of my kick comes to me and you know, there are all kinds of confessions and prayers in the church that encourage this lust. Kill every enemy that is covering your cake, your portion of the cake. And you know, we do all kinds of things in the name of prophetic activities. Events sponsored by hell to push us into impatience. Say, I receive grace to be patient. There are many of us here sister your life would not be in the mess that it is if only you were patient you said all oh, my colleagues are in relationships and one guy just came one of the lonely one among the friends say okay i'm doing too and look from that day till now it's been four or five years of hell on earth because you attach yourself to hagar and ishmael is the product tonight god is delivering someone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I will wait. Everyone say it, I will wait. I receive grace to wait. There is a difference between delay and process in the spirit. If you allow the devil to destroy your life. Listen, let me tell you, I, I shared with you a few stories last week. I remember when... A few years ago i would be invited to go and minister then there was no protocol no nothing and i would prepare fast and pray right and go and minister and at the end of it the people will not even say oh there is an honorarium we want to appreciate you and i mean i will fast for days as if i'm preaching in an international conference somewhere and then i'll go and sometimes is when i arrive that they'll push people in front praise God and say there is a place and I remember I will never forget two pastors they came and met me they said man of God the kind of anointing you have there are some bishops that do not even have it why are you underutilizing this anointing 
many of us will hear that thing and say it's true it's true I'll never forget through the rain through the sun through whatever I will risk myself pay my own transport and get there I will never forget there was a gentleman from BLW it was his suit I used to borrow when they invite me for ministration I will borrow his suit in Suleiman and then Jantra had one nice loafers his brother gave him he will give me the loafers the only thing I had was maybe socks or something you are laughing don't be carried away by suits and all these things because many of see the trouble with men of God is they never open up the process that led them to that place they make it look easy as if it just happened by one prophetic word and many of us are already running you're already calculating your offering and your honorarium by Christmas you better wake up the, the journey is still far in Jesus name it's not that I'm not prophesying that <laughs> I'm used to saying in Jesus name forgive me hallelujah you must learn to wait you must learn to wait and I will show you why we are going to wrap up when I reveal to you why this process is important in the kingdom I will never forget one time when I got an honorarium of 10,000 I couldn't believe it. It was like I was dreaming. 10,000 for preaching something that is my passion that I will live and die for it. Brothers and sisters, a time came in my life when even me, I started talking to myself. I said, ah, but God, why are people doing this to me? People took me for granted. They would have lists of ministers that they are bringing for programs. But they'll find out that the cost implication for holding those graces is so much. And then they will run to this scapegoat called Joshua Selman. Sometimes two days to the conference, they will invite me and I will go to prayer. I will say, Lord, and the Lord will say, go. It looked like I was a fool. But one day came. Due season. Due season. You do not qualify to enter your future if you cannot wait. Who is God speaking to tonight? God gave you a small business under 100,000. You've not been effective there. You're already dreaming. In the name of Jesus, in two months, I'll be riding a Jaguar. I'll be, you better stop dreaming and settle down and understand how things happen in the kingdom. Tame your lust and line it up with the seasons of the Spirit. There is a difference between speed and foolishness are you getting what i'm saying many people step into seasons that is not god that li let's listen if you force a door to open whether it's god that open it or not it will open but the trouble is when they ask you who sent you you will turn back and find out that you've been going alone Hallelujah. So what do you do as you await your due season? This is the crux of this teaching tonight. What do you do when your due season is yet to appear? When that waiting period gets so long? Lord, will the child come? Will the breakthrough come? When will you change my story? Every time I go to pray, you show me a great destiny. You told me a day will come. I will minister before thousands. I will be an international evangelist. You are giving me an international apostolic or prophetic ministry. But as it is, I have not yet seen it. Number one. I'm giving you the formula. Brothers and sisters, if you keep this secret, you will survive the process between prophecy and manifestation you will find out that while men are falling by the wayside there will be a strength that will carry you number one during your waiting period you should do the following 
recognize that there is a divine timing and a due season it comforts you to know that your wait is not forever because God is not a man that he should lie not the son of man that he should repent Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8 won't turn there, tells us that there is a time for everything under the sun the Bible says John remained in the wilderness until his what? season of appearance everyone prophesy to yourself my season of appearance is coming prophesy it my season of appearance is coming can you turn it into a prayer in one minute I may not look like it now but my God there is a making and my season of appearance will come I have a portion among the great and the hand of God will bring me there I will stay through I may not be able to preach now I may not have money in my pocket now but there is a due season it has been written by prophecy not the witches in my village can stop it no power in existence and I choose to wait I choose to wait there is a due season when I will drive the cars there is a due season when men will run after me with jobs there is a due season when so many men will come to ask my hand in marriage there is a due season when my own family will dedicate their own building oh yes time and chance happened to them all my turn is coming I know this for sure a day will come I will know what it feels like to be a kingdom millionaire a day will come that wedding ring will enter my hand too but meanwhile I wait a day will come I will travel abroad as though I'm walking from my house and going outside I will enter the plane a day will come I will wear the convocation gown a day will come I will finally pass the job there is a due season the child will come barrenness does not last forever prophesy in one minute shake away unbelief shake away impatience a day will come I will have peace with my husband I know it's a demonic challenge there are ancestral powers causing this family problem but there is a due season when the hand of God will visit my family I know but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded I am persuaded I may not see the wind I may not see the cloud it does not look like it will rain but the hand of Jehovah that hand that regulates times and seasons my turn will come I will be on television my turn will come the healing anointing will finally work my time will come when my profiting will appear it's called my season of appearing it's called my season of appearing hallelujah recognize that everything under the sun works by timings so when men are pushing you into seasons you are not ready for listen i cannot tell you god gave me an instruction and god told me he said that he would use koinonia messages like angels and messengers of fire and send them across the nations and god specifically said we should never not in this season of ministry begin to sell tapes and do all of that I cannot tell you how many people have called to say man of God you are robbing your ministry of millions of naira I said I appreciate your interest but there is a season 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? So many people have spoken to me. Come and open Koinonia branch in Abuja. Come and open in Lagos. Come and do this. Come and do that. I told you in 2006, after our crusade in Joss, it was so powerful. The PFN said that we should come and open a branch of the ministry. They were willing to give pastors so that we would train and have an auditorium. I went to God and God said you would die. That was exactly what I told them. That God said I would die. Listen, many men of God today, do you know why ministry is killing them? Although God called them, they have opened other seasons for themselves. God never spoke to them to start a church. They started a church. Now they are wondering, no money, no nothing, no grace. There are many people, God told them you are an evangelist. They said I need a base so that I will have money. As though God cannot finance his work. Are you seeing how it has gotten a lot of people into trouble? Never do anything without asking God. Even if God said yes yesterday, ask him today again. Three days for us to start Koinonia, I went on a retreat. Three days I went on a retreat. And I said, Lord, it's not that I'm doubting you, but I want to confirm again. For adventure, it was my flesh that ministered to me. Hallelujah. When you see what the hand of God is upon, even if you are a critic, you will know that there is God in what is happening. Hallelujah. What season in your life have you opened prematurely as a result of impatience? I know you are anointed MOG who asked you to start a healing ministry. You started gathering sick people and telling all of them, write what is wrong with you and lift it up. You want to become a great man. Everybody you laid hands on, nobody was healed. The people are angry. They are planning to beat you by the next healing service. You better go back to God and ask questions. Hallelujah. Many people have produced albums prematurely. They produce five albums. Not even their immediate environment. No. They, they traveled abroad, took the albums, it didn't sell. Because the season. See, I taught you last week that favor is one of the clearest signs that God is with you. Hallelujah. Recognize that there is a due season. Sister, be delivered tonight. The husband will come. You are not the first to get married. Neither will you be the last. Brother, I know you are almost 30 years old. Relax. It's better to enter a profitable relationship at 30 than to enter nonsense that you sweat for 3 years before the arm of God will come to deliver you. Some of you see people in relationship and you admire them. Go and talk to them in truth and find out. Some of them, as they are going, they are just tired. It's just that they don't know what to do again with their lives. There is a child. They are already married. Say preparation. Many people want to drive cars. I must buy a car. I must buy a car. By force, the word of God is working. Nobody ever drove a car in my family. I must be the one and it must be this year. Calm down. Look, trust me. We prophesy all the time and my, my greatest joy is to see everyone blessed spiritually, financially, socially, and so on and so forth. But then, God will judge me if I tell you that after prophecy, it will just happen to you the next day. It's not every aspect of your life that will happen like that. There are seasons. Everybody says seasons. There is seed. There is time. There is harvest. Let's hurry up. Number two. Every time you are about to get weary because the waiting period to your breakthrough is so long and it looks like will God ever come? Will I ever get to Canaan? 
after crossing the Red Sea, while you are rejoicing, thinking that's all, you find out that there is another mighty battle waiting for you. Listen. The second key is to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. It's amazing how we easily forget the things that God has done in our lives. And we focus on the things that He has not done. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, this house is too small. We are tired. We need a change. Remember when you were managing with one room and that one room it was your friend that gave you. Although God has told you you are going to a new house, but in the interim, when impatience wants to set in, when weariness wants to set in, count the faithfulness of God. Where is the God that gave me a lion? Where is the God that gave me the bear? Oh God, I'm, I'm not eating hamburgers and all of this now, but Lord, I'm no more soaking Gary. At least I can eat once in a day that I paid by myself. In the dream, I saw four points. When the result came out, I saw 3.1. But Lord, I give you praise because it used to be 1.7 and you have helped me. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God so far. It's easy for Satan to trivialize God's faithfulness in your life. Once in a while, I have the opportunity to go to hospitals to see people. And, and then I, I pray for people once in a while. And I am humbled at the confidence of people in the midst of humanly speaking unchangeable situations hallelujah i have spoken to so many hiv patients in my life and you look at some of them and you humanly speaking you can say it's over you are counting days but you see the joy i remember speaking with one of the women very recently and this woman was rejoicing she said i now have a ministry and it was, she did not even come for the counseling for healing. She had so conquered it that for her to live is Christ and to die is gain. She was focusing on something else. Yet there is somebody shouting and arguing if the husband does not come in two months. Lord, if I backslide, let it be that it's your fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are people who have been diagnosed. Oh, you need to go to the hospital, brothers and sisters and see people whose legs they've cut, they amputated the legs and then you keep seeing them singing His faithfulness is forevermore a pretty lady who is not married already but she had an accident and one eye is gone are you getting my point? and she says, yes, Lord I thank you I'm alive if I can do nothing I can give God praise whereas a house close to that same street where the accident occurred. There is a complainer and a murmurer shouting at God. We are tired of eating spaghetti in this house. My father only pays school fees. Shame on him. At his age, he cannot even give me 5,000. My father is giving me 1,000. You wait and see the one that it was with box and prophecy they sent them from the village to come to Zaria one heavy echo like and prophecy may God be with you and he came and stopped at North Gate not having one naira yet they are in 300 level when you see people worshipping Koinonia everyone knows the story we can wear suit and fake it but everyone knows where the shoe is hurting so don't let anybody stop your praise when it's time to worship God They gave birth to them in a nice maternity ward. They gave birth to you on the road. The faithfulness of God. You would have died within 24 hours. You must learn to meditate on the faithfulness of God. Who is God speaking to tonight? You cried for years. Let the husband come. Now the husband has come. 
you are saying lord i need a boy i need a boy i'm tired of three girls on the other side a woman is saying lord anything anything boy or girl whatever i am grateful just one i don't need two i just need a consolation that I am a woman. What to do? This is one big secret of my life. You never find me frowning and wondering what will my tomorrow be me? God has done too much in my life. I can begin to count on the faithfulness of God till my time of manifestation comes and it will not finish. Hallelujah. That's why by the grace of God, there is no reason for me to envy any man till I die. People challenge me, I am happy. But God has done too much in my life. I will be the most ungrateful person in my life if I ever try to trivialize what God has done. Sister, you are always complaining but you forgot you are beautiful. There was there about beauty. Oh, may God change it for one day and you will know what is there about beauty. Are you kidding? Beauty took a woman from her village to become the king's wife. You never say, Lord, thank you. Every day somebody says, I'm fine. To an extent, when they say you're fine, say, please don't mock me. Hold on. See, let me tell you something. Ungratefulness is a terrible disease is seen before God refusing to acknowledge the things that he has done shine on me your grace your grace I'm nothing without you it's great your grace shine on me hallelujah you are there complaining oh god so i'm going to graduate with a pass you wouldn't have given me the admission really really you wait and find out students that were withdrawn in their second year or third year because they could not get a c not an e a c because of the nature of their program hallelujah and they left school and went, and went to learn hand work and they are still grateful to god hallelujah can we take two minutes to count our blessings go ahead and do it just in two minutes and we'll continue think of when you were nothing brothers and sisters Oh, I know what God has done in my life. No amount of honor will fool me. No amount of grace. Some of us were called this. God saved us. Some of us, when God saved you, you could not even speak English. You know it. Your family is still living in a hut right now. But God has exalted you. Tell him thank you. Your grace, your grace, we're nothing without you. Those of us who have been in this ministry for a while, remember when we used to sit on the floor? Remember when we used to sit on the floor? Who is God speaking to tonight? You are a graduate and you are still complaining. How many graduates? Does Nigeria produce in a year? I heard about a lady who had a ghastly motor accident today and died. How many of us have escaped accident? Armed robbers came to your house. They came to your neighbor's house. They came to your shop. Terrorists blew bombs in different places. Some of you saw it. You saw them. They pointed guns at you. But there was a hand of destiny that delivered you. When have you become ungrateful? Go ahead and pray. And say, Lord, 
although I have not seen what you will do yet, I have not seen the manifestation, but I thank you. I thank you. The God who did it for me before will do it again. The God who gave me a husband will give me a child. The God who gave me parents. The God who gave me admission will pay my school fees for next session. God who sustained my father without a job for 10 years that God is able God who sustained my mother without salary she trained me to school where is that God where is the God that delivered you when the doctors concluded about you when that breast lump grew up when, 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 that, when your hair was your hair was falling where is that God that helped you some of our parents were sacked and God gave them better jobs have you forgotten the faithfulness of this God your grace your grace I'm nothing without you grace your grace shines on me Hallelujah. There are seven secrets the Lord gave me. And the Lord told me if I keep these secrets, nothing will stop me from becoming what He has destined for me. One day maybe I will share them. But one of it is this that I've shared with you tonight. If you know how to take advantage of your testimonies, you will never never become a victim of impatience let's hurry up number three what to do while you wait for your due season employ the weapon of praise Hi-ya. many people do not know that praise is a weapon Employ when when you count your blessings, then you balance it up with praise and see the devil that will stand to speak discouragement to you. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's hurry up. Habakkuk chapter 3. Let's read from verse 17 and let's see what the prophet had to say. Habakkuk chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, this is what makes some people mighty. And they walk upon the earth as if Satan does not exist. There are revelations that empower men. Although, everyone look up. The fig tree shall not blossom. But at least there is a fig tree. Is that true? Neither shall fruit be in the vines. But at least there is a vine. The labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Somebody say, yet I will rejoice. The Wayek result did not come out well. Yet I will rejoice. I will joy in the god of what the god that will bring that salvation i will rejoice although nothing may seem to work some of you as you go back right now to your homes the truth is that there's nothing to eat this night yet i will rejoice i remember times in my life i've told you when i will buy bread and cut the bread and put granite Uh, and close it and give thanks to the God of Israel because I knew that what was in me was greater than a restaurant greater than whatever can you sing the song he's played now Sam what does the song say let's even understand the meaning of the song 
so that we know we are serious. Evil people, what does he say? Email. That's what I'm saying. What's the meaning? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. For what? Thank you that you've done well. You've done well. God bless you. Email. Just worship God in one minute. Email. Oh, Kaka. Oh, And tell the God of your salvation, thank you. Psalms 138, very quickly. Psalms 138, verse 1. Powerful scripture. I'm giving you the arsenals to go back and bulldoze the gates of hell. And let the devil know that although you were almost gassing out, you came for koinonia tonight. And that the oil will never run dry. He said, I will praise thee with my whole heart before the gods all the gods that want me to be weary he said i will praise you before the gods i will sing praises that means i will look at all of these options and i will dance before god and say it's better for me to remain barren than to go to a herbalist to get a child the weapon of praise the weapon of praise let me hurry up because i want us to take at least five or ten minutes Two more points and we'll round up. We have to praise God this night. Number four. What do you do while you wait for your due season? Number four. Look up. Begin to act like the future you see coming. While you wait, if you truly believe that you are going to enter that future, begin to act. If you think you are going to get into the palace, then start learning the language of royalty. It's the sign of faith that you are preparing. You believe you are getting married. Start behaving like a married woman, not a small girl. Change. Switch. Have the mindset. Develop the ideologies that conform to the new level you are entering. Start acting like the person you believe you are going to be. Develop the mindset. You believe you are going to be a multi-billionaire CEO. Start behaving like that. Don't behave like an arm robber. Don't read any nonsense you see on the internet. Compose yourself. Start carrying the traits of leaders. You believe you are going to be an exceptional leader. Start training yourself. Don't speak anyhow. Great men don't speak anyhow. Start learning the protocol of greatness. There is a protocol that leads you into the realm of greatness. You believe you are going to be standing before presidents. Start behaving well. With your plate of gari, use fork and knife and lead. No problem. Make your mistakes. You are doing it in the secret place. A day will come you will do the real one. For sure. begin to act like your future when joseph joseph knew he had seen it in the spirit seen it in the dream that a day will come he will stand the sun representing his father the moon representing his mother and 11 stars will bow to him but then his life was opposite what his destiny was saying they threw him in the well and he composed himself he said i'm a leader I will learn the language of royalty. Listen, when they sold him for the equivalent of about $13 or so, that's the equivalent today. $13, you sell a human being. 
were they so broke that they sold their brother to go away but joseph said no problem there's one song we used to sing before you can take my coat you cannot touch my destiny we used to sing and jump with it during missions then in fcs that you can take my coat you cannot touch my destiny should i teach you one minute one two sing you can take my coat you cannot touch my destiny they can take your coat they can lie against you they can scandalize you that's taking your coat but it will not touch your destiny they can say you will never make it no problem that's taking your coat it doesn't just mean till a woman comes to lie that you rape her whatever men do to impede your progress they are taking your coat but they can take your coat they cannot touch your destiny see this must be your contemplations in the secret place The cost of your future is preparation. The cost, the price, the cost for your future is your preparation. While you prepare for your due season, keep getting qualified for that future. You will never enter a future that you are not qualified for. I shared this last week. God will never bring you into a future you are not prepared for. So he will hold back that time so that your preparation will coincide with the comings of times and seasons. The period of waiting is the process that qualifies you for your future. Write it down. The period of waiting is the process. The trainings that you receive during that period of waiting is what qualifies you for the future. So your waiting period is a period of preparation. Everybody say my waiting period is my period of preparation. Say one more time. If God gave you the 5 million naira last year, he would have killed you. So God says, hold on. Just keep being faithful with the 100,000. Oh God, but my colleagues have 1 million. Say, no, none of your problem. Just wait. And then you keep building yourself. God, I want the level of anointing that will move mountains and do all of that. God will say, just, just keep moving your chair in the place of prayer. Your chair is small enough for you to move. When you can move that chair, you will move something else till you move mountains. David did not become a king in one day. There was a progression. Although he was anointed for the palace, there were seasons. Be faithful at your current level. When Joseph went to Potiphar's house, he was so exceptional. He didn't have to wait until he got to Pharaoh. He was faithful, excellent. So much so that Potiphar made him the head of everything. He walked like royalty. He talked what to make the wife of Potiphar to be attracted. You know, slaves had a way that they dressed. Their beds were long. They didn't have time to shave and look nice. But Potiphar's wife looked at Joseph and she, she was stripped. She said, come, I prefer this guy to my husband because he walks like royalty. Other slaves were moving this over. Wherever we die, Joseph said, I'm not dying in Egypt. I know that I've come to the place of royalty. Square up your shoulder and know that it only one of the most comforting scriptures for me in scripture in the bible is and it came to pass everybody say and it came to pass powerful scripture it never comes to stay and it came to pass you hear the bible say it again on the fifth day of this month and that and that and the word of the lord came to pass hallelujah how many of you are behaving like your future already don't raise your hand some of you are still behaving like your past because in the future 
you will be too great to keep bitterness but you are still keeping bitterness right from secondary school now you've met with the lady in university and you say even till we die you are still holding on to your past you are prolonging your arrival because you are not preparing yourself to be qualified hallelujah your preparation is your report card that qualifies you for the future your preparation is your report card your diligence at this level number five Oh, that's a beautiful song. We've not sang this song in a while. You think I'll sing it? Let's continue. I'm trying to rush. Number five. What to do while you are waiting for your due season? Look for problems to solve. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. The nearest problem to you is your exit out of your current season. We discussed that last year. No man ever enters greatness. You find favor with God through the fear of the Lord, through faith and through tithing. You find favor with men by solving problems. Joseph knew that he had the ability to solve problems. And he rejoiced when he was in the prison. Potiphar's wife lied that he raped her. said, no problem. The truth will come out because you can see look at me you become too cheap when you spend your time explaining yourself to critics are you getting me you become too cheap you make yourself too cheap there are many of us who learn this now learn this now it is easier to become great than to remain great look at me come my sister Let this girl buy a jeep now. That by next week, Koinonia, she comes with what jeep now? Car people. Huh? Ah, that, that has expired now. Who is thinking of all this fancy? Praise God. Jaguar. No, let me say something realistic. CRV. Right? Honda CRV 2014 limited edition and she comes with it do you know at once all of a sudden you will find fault with her hair you will find fault with what she's wearing is it this place they put watch or here you know why listen people's progress often it has a way of choking and revealing our current weakness it is a natural thing you must learn how to celebrate greatness when you see it. That's the antidote to jealousy and having the heart of a critic. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if this lady came from one village somewhere and all of a sudden she marries a millionaire and God just changes her life. There are people who say, eh, is this how to smile? She's not even behaving like a rich man's wife. Hold on. The truth is, it's not about her smile. Because if another millionaire comes to marry you too, you stop. You have now become colleagues in greatness. So no more criticism. Are you seeing that? I'm teaching you a principle. Every time people criticize you, understand their predicament. Don't be angry. Your success is doing something to them. Listen. Hold on. You were still doing the same thing before you got great. Why was it not an issue? That is today now, all of a sudden, eh, Shedrach wants to show us he's wearing shoe of 20,000. Who doesn't have it? If not because of my father, will I not be wearing it? No problem. Listen. Deliver yourself from the spirit of criticism by celebrating greatness when you see it. Oh, Shedrach, this is beautiful. You are looking smart. Wow, wonderful. We are coming. God bless you. You hardly criticize those you truly celebrate. Are you getting my point? Please, learn this. Every time you see God doing a good thing in someone's life, many of our parents are like that. You just saw one doctor, one professor in ABU. He just changed the fifth car. 
uh, keep chopping the money of the institution. It's all that. Get out of that attitude of cynicism and learn to celebrate. Because you are sowing seeds that will speak for you. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't spend your time trying to respond to critics. You say, hey, you have started palming your hair. You want all the colonial guys to see you, no problem. Just continue doing what you are doing. And truly they will see you. And marry and leave the person criticizing you. Problems are gates, right? Problems are not walls. They are gates. Problems are doors. Begin to view problems as gates. It exits you from one season and brings you into another. The sun will no more give you sunlight by All the bruises inflicted by this is your past now. Hallelujah. You never learned this song for how many years? Those of us who are new are lost. The old people didn't used to sing, they'll just keep chewing their mouth. The moment you say, Heal all the wounds inflicted by this world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Problems are opportunities for significance. When God wants to announce you, He seduced problems for you to solve. Until you solve a problem, you are not known by anybody. You remain insignificant. Until there was Goliath, David was not known. Until the king had a dream, Joseph was not needed. Problems are opportunities for your significance. Problem solving guarantees your success. Please write. I'm showing you the things to do that will bring you into your due season. Problem solving guarantees your success. Write this down. Problem solving creates your distinction from others. Everybody will look at you the same way they are looking at everybody until an ability to solve problem distinguishes you. Sovereign Problem solving sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It makes your difference to be seen. Problem solving makes you known. You will remain in the wilderness until the problem you solve announces you. When you do this, you can rejoice knowing that a due season is coming. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. Brothers and sisters, as I look at us here, I see people who are bigger than Nigeria. I see people who are bigger than, than West Africa. There is an anointing within you. Some of you are sitting down here. Nobody, look, let me tell you. I have learned from experience that there are all kinds of gifted people scattered in this house. You may just sit down and watch people. I remember when I was marking the exams of the, the, the first set of the, the students, the school of ministry. My goodness. Those guys were trained under quite some harsh conditions. They had like six months of strike and all of that. For a four-month program, they spent close to a year. When I was marking their exams, I was even afraid. I said, these guys did not do well. I was shocked. I tell you, some people wrote that exam as if it's magnet. And it's a kind of exam that you can even carry your, your, your notes and write it and you will still form it. And I learned once again. Brothers and sisters, the person sitting close to your side, 
may be a genius that is bigger than this realm. It's only a matter of time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Forget about the board, what the board has told you. 1.1, 2.2, 3.3, hold on. You are bigger than that. But will you wait for your season of appearance? Or will you get so intimidated? There are many people who sit down and say, I'm bigger than this level. So I will move myself. That's the greatest danger. There are some of you that are doing jobs of 20,000. But the truth is that even if they pay you 1 million naira, they have insulted you based on what you have. Continue doing the 20,000 naira job. Qualify yourself for the greater seasons that are coming. Hallelujah. There are some of you when you sit in class with your colleagues. Academically speaking, you may not be the best students. But there is so much in you. Don't worry. Don't try to announce yourself. Relax. A day will come, God will speak and say, This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter. This is my beloved kingdom millionaire. This is my beloved apostle. This is my beloved prophet. This is my beloved pastor. And he will command the world to hear you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Very, very important. We're going to do two things very quickly. In the next five minutes, please, I want everybody to participate in this. We're going to enter such a realm of prophetic worship. We're just going to thank God for the season that He has even brought us. Thank Him for the things Please worship him. Prepare yourselves. Thank him for the things that he has done. And thank him for what he's going to do. I don't know how you are going to worship God. And praise God tonight. And then after that, we will pray and prophesy. And receive grace from God. This message you are hearing, you will play it again and again in the future. When you sit on the throne of greatness. And you will cry. Because you will thank Rise up on your feet, everyone. this prayer session 
with a dangerous prophecy about your destiny. I don't know what the devil has spoken to you. I don't know what options you are about to take. But right now, lift your voice and begin to speak. And say, I'm not giving up. My God is alive. Go ahead. Pray. No way. No giving up. The prophet is still above my head. There's no giving up. I may fail, but I will rise again. There's no giving up. The hand of God is upon me. I'm an object of praise. Oh, protect it. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. My destiny is before me. There is a generation waiting for me. There's no turning back. I may cry, but there's no turning back. I may weep, but there's no turning back. There is an anointing upon me. There is a prophecy upon my life. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. All the days of my appointed time, I will wait. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. There is hope for a tree, even though it is cut off at the scent of water. Will fall again. Prophesy. There's hope for my family. There's hope for my marriage. There's hope for my academics. To him that is joined with the living, there is hope. There is hope. There is hope. Go protect it. Cause the spirit of discouragement. Cause the spirit of impatience. Cause the spirit of discouragement. That business can arise again. That marriage can arise again. Your CGPA can arise again. Although you are in final year, it's not too late. Samson, your eyes may be plucked out, your hair may be cut off, but there is a new season. David, remain in the wilderness. The day of your announcing is coming. Come on, pray. Pray, Koinonia. Make investment for your destiny. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. No compromise. Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we'll round up. The next prayer point is that you're going to cry for grace. The Bible says, if you turn aside in the day of battle, if because of the fierceness of the season of waiting, you now say, I will marry any man. I will take any job. Okay, I will go to the harbor list. I will ask God for forgiveness later on. I will sleep with the boss. Let me just get the work. i like you to shout, no way. Shout it, no way. Listen, the three Hebrew boys said, Oh king, we are not careful to speak to you in this matter. Our God, whom we serve, will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we are going to pray. i like you to say, Oh God, tonight, give me the finisher's anointing. Give me the finisher's anointing. One more time, I will push. Come on, open your mouth and pray. The finisher's anointing. The anointing. The anointing.
The finisher's anointing. Koinonia, pray. You are almost there. Don't give up. When your season is about unveiling, don't give up. You paid the price for 10 years, for 5 years. You paid the price. You paid the price. Lord, give me the finisher's anointing. Like Samson, I will finish. Like Samson, I receive the finisher's anointing. Then they keep beside me, but I won't give up. Oh, God, don't go for Come on, heart of faith. I receive the finisher's anointing. They may call me more than the leader. But I will keep walking in holiness and finishing. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. Till my change comes. I and change happens to them. Wait. Wait. They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the Lord. Oh my soul, wait thou upon the God of your salvation. Though thy beginning be small. But your latter end shall be great. Though thy beginning be small. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord, when they are strength, when they are almost casting out, suddenly. When the devil is celebrating the finishing of the oil, a prophetic word brings it back again. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. I like us to prophesy and say, Lord, I will become what you have shown me. Nothing will stop me. I'm on my way coming, prophesy. Go put Tokata. I will become that prophet that you have told me. I will become that great man. That great woman. I prophesy. I send a prophecy to my destiny. He and I, you will enter your realm of greatness. Koinonia, you will only rise from glory to glory, from grace to grace, from prosperity to prosperity. One level of the anointing of Prophesy, I call my family blessed. I call my loved ones blessed. I call my destiny blessed. The hand of the Uberbell that has started this work. The hand of the Uberbell that started this ministry. The hand of the Uberbell will complete it at the shout of praise. The shout of praise. The shout of praise. It is not by power. It is not by might. There is an ability of the Spirit. There is an ability of the Spirit. It is the finish of the Lord. like adding just one more prayer point we are going to pray specifically for the finances of our lives and our loved ones are you ready to pray two prayer points on that are just at once cause the powers are you getting me i told you there are some delays that are not godly there are some waitings that are delays i like you to cause the powers 
and release increase. How many people are ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I stand as an ambassador of the kingdom and I plead the blood of Jesus over everything that speaks against the prosperity of my life and my family. Lift up your head, O ye gate, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient door. Lift your voice and speak. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Over the spirit of poverty. We plead the blood of Jesus. your hands everyone lift your hands I prophesy over your life everything that has made you unthankful everything that has made you impatient that you are about to fall out in this season and compromise I cause that power now in the name of Jesus Christ every other voice you've been listening to that is not the voice of his majesty tonight we silence that voice in the name of jesus every wrong relationship wrong association wrong business wrong ties in the name of jesus christ that is giving satan access to destroy you be delivered from it now be delivered from it now. Be delivered from it now. I pray for you. Where your strength is almost failing. Tonight, receive a supply of strength. A supply that will last you until you arrive. In the mighty name of Jesus. That when men say there is a casting down. For you, you will say there is a lifting up. And I speak over everything in your life that is dead. That the devil has told you there is no hope. In the name that is above all names, I command those dry bones, come alive now. Come alive now. That dying CGPA, come alive now. That dying family come alive now. That dying marriage come alive now. For your expectations shall not be cut short in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. There are people here tonight who are saying, man of God, I need to make my ways right with the Lord. I love him, but I've not made a commitment to walk with him. And there are yet others who are saying, I've given my life to Christ before, but for whatever reason, I've found myself walking in ways that are not of God, and I need to retrace my step right now. We're out of time. In just one minute, if you belong to any of these categories, I'd like you to leave your seats. Don't be ashamed and come out here right now. I want to pray for you. Go ahead. You're hearing the voice of the Lord. Don't remain on your seat inside and outside, wherever you are. Don't wait for anybody to come out. You are the first person. God bless you. God bless you. The Lord is speaking to people. When you hear his voice, do not sit back. Do not sit back. God bless you. God bless you. This is where it all starts. God bless you. Keep coming. We have just one minute for this. God bless you. Make sure you don't sit back. This is about your life. This is about your destiny. God bless you. Keep coming. Thank you so much, those of you who are here. This is the greatest decision you would ever make. In one minute, I'd like you to lift your right hand. Come and join them. God bless you. I know they are still coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you and I love you with all my heart. I make up my mind to live for you from today and for the rest of my life. Join them, my brother. I denounce sin and Satan and I receive the gift of eternal life into my spirit. I declare in the name of Jesus that I'm a child of God. I'm saved. The life of God is in me. In the name of Jesus. I release every one of you from whatever has held you. I don't care what mistakes you have made. I don't care where you have missed it. Tonight in the name of Jesus you are released. I cause that power that holds you down. And I release you in the mighty name of Jesus to experience the way, the very life of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare you saved. I declare you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for making this glorious decision. Bless you. Please, I'd like you to follow the usher waving his hands. They'll have your information and you'll be back. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. If this is your first time tonight worshipping with us here at Koinonia, we love you and we have a blessing and a prophecy for you. Please leave your seat and just run out here very quickly. If you brought anybody, now is the time to push them forward. You love them too much to allow them without this prophecy. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. Very quickly, we're out of time. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Koinonia, celebrate them. You can do better than this. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord brought you by His mighty hand. He brought you to change you. He brought you to transform your life. Please keep coming. Don't stop. Koinonia is a sacrifice of appreciation. Thanking the Lord for what He has done. Hallelujah. I want to thank all of you. Thank you so much for making our time to worship with us. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. God is doing great things in our midst. Thank you so much for taking the time to come. We want to bless you and prophesy. We are anointed and when we speak over your life, it follows you. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and prophesy. Influence their destiny with the power of prophecy. We command in the name of Jesus Christ that you are experiencing the hand of God, you are experiencing the grace of God. Every challenge you came here with, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we cause that power, we cause that power, we cause that power. In the name of Jesus, we release you to experience the life of God in its fullness. We bless you with hunger for the things of the Spirit. We bless you with the grace of God. It's multiplied to you through knowledge. Every habit, every challenge that followed you here, it dies in this place. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him 
that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.